Welcome everybody to the Daily Mastermind here at the Mortgage Mastermind Group. I'm Paul Baxter here with Systems, Strategies, and Implementation. Hope you're having a fantastic day. I know I certainly am. Today, and, and it really stems from our conversation from yesterday, today we're going to talk about how to use a squeeze page. And specifically, I'm going to show you the steps on how to set it up inside Google Drive. And we'll get into the technical parts, and then we'll talk about the reasons why we're saying certain things and how to be effective with your squeeze pages. So in essence, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to accomplish this. Now, I know you can't see it from the image here, but this is a squeeze page I created right inside of Facebook using nothing more than what's available to me. There was no systems I had to go out and sign up for. There was nothing I had to buy. As a matter of fact, of the people I see on the call right now, you all have all of the tools available to do exactly what I've done here. And it's just a squeeze page on Facebook that I can now run advertisements. I've got a decent sales copy up top. I've got something to grab their attention with a video. And I've got a nice little easy squeeze form to generate leads, to generate a, a list, so to speak. So why are we going to talk about it with Google Drive as opposed to, you know, there's a Weber, there's a thousand places you can build your, your squeeze page from. Well, Google Drive is really cool. It's a web-based document, spreadsheets, drawings, and presentations that let users edit the same file. So you can actually share anything you're working on, whether it be a presentation or a form and you want somebody else to see the responses, you can share that. And anytime there's a change, all the collaborators see those changes at the same time and see what the latest version is. It's also anytime, anywhere, any place, anyhow, any way you want to slice it, you have access to your stuff if it's on Google Drive. You can do it from any PC in the world. It's just a matter of logging into your account. You can do it from your phone. Yes, even your iPhone will allow you to log into your Google Drive. You can, you can upload the app right there to your phone. It's, it's fantastically easy and, and greatly available, so it gives you the flexibility to be able to do things. You get a great idea for a form, or you get a great idea uh, you want to put it in, but you happen to be sitting at Panera Bread having lunch, you can do it right from your phone. Really cool stuff. Um, I love the fact that it's universal. It doesn't matter whether or not you're using a PC or a Mac or you're on an old school Linux computer. It doesn't matter. And you can upload documents that are um, Word docs. You can upload documents that are um, Microsoft.org, which is a, like a poor man's version of the, the Microsoft Office suite. Um, in office.org is what it's called. You can upload most any kind of file type to Google Drive. And then the files are stored in Google Drive and are always accessible anywhere in the clouds. If you have, if you're a team um, and, and you've got people that, that work underneath you or you've got an IT professional, you can have an administrator can manage all of the sharing of the files. What's cool about managing the file sharing or having the ability in Google Drive to share files, they, they don't get the file, they just have access to it on your file drive. You can revoke access at any time that you need to. And that is something that you may find yourself needing to do, hopefully not time to time, but sometimes you may find yourself needing to have to do that. So Google Forms, it's free web-based in the clouds, which is fantastic. It's available on all devices. You can share the form with your assistant, your partner, your realtor partner. Uh, you get instant notifications when there's a change made, especially when we're talking about squeeze forms. You get an instant notification when somebody fills out that form. They're easy to duplicate, so if you're going to create another one for a different scenario or multiple, you know, one for your FHA niche and one for your VA niche, you can quickly duplicate them and just make it work or change a couple of small things to make it work for your different niches. It has a live web link, and you can embed it into a blog, a website, or Facebook. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get 
signed in or set up if you do not if you've got a Google account already meaning if you sign in and you go to YouTube and it says you know hi James or hi Joy you have a Google account already you already have Google Drive you just aren't using it one Google account gives you everything that Google has so if you do have an account you'll simply sign in if you don't click on create an account it's super easy you don't have to use the Gmail application if you have a Google account that's not what it means it just means that you have a Google account and all of Google's platforms are now available to you for your use okay so get yourself signed in and what you're gonna do oop, I forgot one slide that's what I wanted to show you guys is how to get to drive so when you go to Google and I'll just backspace and kind of use this graphic to show you you see these little squares up here it's these little three rows of three squares that's Google's applications and when you drop that down you're gonna see this little symbol right here is the Google Drive symbol so you'll once you're signed in you'll simply go to that little symbol from here you'll select the Google Drive symbol and that will bring you into here and I see there's a question so let me pause here and make sure we're all on the same page yep you can absolutely do it from your Gmail account let me show you real quick and I'll take a little side step from the PowerPoint here because I want you guys to be aware one Google account got, covers everything so if you're in your Gmail if you're signed into your Gmail account remember I told you about the three rows of three squares it's on the top of everything that is Google so if I just go to Google by itself not even my Google account so if I go to Google search notice I've got those bars if I go to YouTube let me go to YouTube real quick here if I go to YouTube I've got oh it took it away from me doesn't have it on YouTube I thought it had it on YouTube that's the one and only application that it doesn't have it on um, but I can always come back to to my stuff from my account uh, I thought it did have it on YouTube it used to it must have recently changed but from your Gmail you simply drop down those little boxes and see right there is Google Drive it has all the applications that you use most frequently so you select Google Drive and it takes you right into your Google Drive which now this puts us right back at the point on the PowerPoint where we are where we're at Google Drive Sorry guys, reading a reading a message. Yep, absolutely. So what Peggy is saying, she shared an entire photo album from Google Drive. So what she did is she took a whole bunch of photos from a very very cool special event that she was honored and privileged enough to take part of because of the special person that her daughter-in-law is and the extra work that she puts in 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 her job. So they got this special opportunity and there was a lot of pictures they wanted to share that moment so what Peggy did is she shared it to Google Drive and then shared that entire Google Drive folder with her daughter-in-law and it all synced up perfectly from the mobile app so really easy to use guys um, and James again from your Google, from your Gmail you would just click those boxes again select Google Drive and that'll put you in the same place we are what you're going to do when you get here is you're going to click the create button now on a side note we're not covering this today this is not what today's class is all about but notice that there's this little small red button here as well with the arrow pointing up this is an upload button so you can not just create documents in Google Drive but you can upload documents that are on your computer already directly into your Google Drive for secured cloud-based storage as well as sharing options yep James we talked about that a little bit yesterday um, we talked about that Wayne had that same question yesterday um, and and I'll, I'll cover that towards the end here and show you the right URL address the the 
there's a thing with URL addresses when they have a forward slash and then some words after the forward slash. That's called the permalink of a website or a web page. Each page has its own permalink. And the permalink that you're using currently got changed. So I'll address that at the end of the presentation today. So once you're in Google Drive, you click on the Create. Again, you do have the option to upload here as well. But you're going to click on Create and you're going to select form from the options that you're given. Now note that you can create a document, you can create a presentation, a spreadsheet, or a drawing right inside of Google Drive. And yeah, these presentations, the setup, the way it works is very, very much, it, they pretty much mimicked what PowerPoint does. Document is pretty much a Word doc. The spreadsheet is pretty much an Excel spreadsheet. So it, it's it's fantastic stuff if you don't have access or you're looking to do those things and you don't, you're not in front of your computer with your Excel, you can utilize Google Docs or Google Drive, excuse me, to do those things. We're working in form. So when you create form, the first thing it pops up, now under title it'll, it'll have untitled form here, so just change that to the name of the title uh, of your form that you're going to be using. I'm choosing to do mine for free agent marketing analysis is what I am offering to get to entice people to fill out my form. And that's the thing, don't, don't begin making your form until you know what it is, what's the goal of, of your squeeze page. What are you trying to accomplish by getting people to fill out this form? What are you going to use to entice people to fill out that form and that enticement is where my title came from because what I'm trying to do to get agents, I'm looking for referral partners on my form and I'm trying to get them to fill out my form by offering them a free agent marketing analysis. I'm offering to analyze their marketing for them to help them become better and stronger in marketing. So that's what my offer is to entice them to fill out my form and you must have a good offer you must give them value you must give them a reason why they should fill out the form and it's not give them a reason to give you your information when people are finding things that are that are going to be something of value when you when you think about it in your own terms when you stumble across the form are you making a determination to fill out that form based on whether or not you want to give me your information or are you filling out that form based on whether or not you feel like what the what you get in return is is worth the time it takes to fill out the form? It's to me, it's not about giving up my information. I could care less if Mr. Mr. Real Estate Agent has my contact information. But what I don't get back is the time it takes me to sit there and fill out the form. So is the thing that you're offering to give me for filling out the form worth my time and effort of filling out the form? That's my thought process, not, ooh, they're going to have my information. That never enters into it. So give them enough reason to outweigh the fact, you know, how much time it'll take or whether or not it's worth it for them to bother with filling out the form. That's the big deal, right? All right, so I gave it a name. The next step is to choose a theme. Now, for what most of the time for what we're going to be doing, if you're doing the form all by itself, you're going to let the form be its own web page, which I don't recommend. Then you can go with like a cool background like some fishes or some balloons or, you know, flowers or something like that. You can go with a cool background. But for the most part, we're going to be embedding these forms into a pre-made page that tells our story, that has our offer, that has our enticement, we're going to embed the actual form into those pages. So I typically will go with the default form here or one of the other plain ones towards the bottom. And as you can see, I'm highlighting here, there's a scroll bar. I think there's like 47 different themes that you can choose from for your style. But I typically go with a very plain style because, again, I'm making the form in order to embed it into a page that does have the style and the look that I'm looking for. Once you've chosen those things and set your title, you simply click OK. Now, when you click, oh, there's a question about that. Yes, these forms are, are the squeeze page itself, and we're going to talk about that 
Uh, these forms are what you're trying to, what you're doing is you're squeezing information. And so that's what your form is intended to do, is to squeeze information. So once you've selected your title, you've given it a title, you've, you've given it a theme, by default, the first question, you pop into the first question when you click OK, and it's question type, and it has the type of multiple choice. This is what it basically looks like. So you're going to begin to build out your form first by just taking the question that's already there and edit the name of that question to say instead of, you know, question title here, put first name. And then on the first one they've already given you, just drop down the multiple choice or question type and choose text. That's going to make it so they'll type in their first name. That's the type of form that you're going to be using. Next, I always make the name be a required field. So if you do that on the first one, you got the first question comes up by default, you know, untitled question. You're going to edit that to say first name. Then you're going to drop down multiple choice and change that to text and then select the required field. So by doing that one time, you've set up the basics of what your questions are going to be. You can simply then use the duplicate button up here to clone it. And so you clone it and all you got to do now is edit where it says first name to say last name and it already is marked for required field. And then you edit the last one. Once you, once you do that again, you edit the last one to say email address. Now, depending on how many questions you want, you can duplicate again. You can change the question type if you want to know, you know, if you're doing one directly to consumers and you, you want to know how long they've been renting, you can say, you know, are you, do you rent or own and make it a multiple choice and just put a checkbox or, or, or something like that there where they just simply can click a checkbox. They rent. Cool. How long have you rented? Three to five years? five to seven years, seven to nine, you know, whatever the case may be, you can add additional questions. But add your questions with the knowledge of what I talked about a couple of slides back. When I'm making that decision as to whether or not I'm going to fill out the form, I'm looking at how much time it'll take me to fill out the form and is the offer that you're making me worth my time and effort to fill out your form. So that being the case, I want to make my form as short and simple and easy as it can possibly be for people to be able to get in there and provide. I, I'm just looking for a way to follow up. So that's, that goes back to defining your goals. My goal is to give me a reason to follow up with these people. So I don't really need to know what company they're with. I don't need to know how long they've been in real estate on this form. I just need their first name, last name, email address, and hopefully I can get their phone number too. So I would probably add their phone number, right? So I would do that by just changing it to, you know, adding a duplicate phone number and text and let them type it in. The last thing you're going to do when you're building your form, and this is the part that most people forget to do when you're doing Google Forms, is to change what your confirmation message says. You have the ability to put in whatever you'd like there. Congratulations on taking action for your business. Your marketing analysis is on its way. That's what I've, I'm saying on mine. Now, if you've got a, you can actually put a link in there or a URL address if you want them to, when they get their confirmation, you know, maybe your offer is to get a free report on the most frequently asked questions for VA loans. So you could actually say, hey, that's, you know, thank you so much for inquiring about VA loans. To get all the information you're looking for, go here. And when they click that link, it takes them to your website where you've got a frequently asked questions already posted. You can do lots of different things in the, in the confirmation page, but basically you want to make sure it's reaffirming that they signed up at your first opportunity for communication. Now you can share your link. So once, you're, once you've finished your form, you click the, the button on the bottom to, to share your link. Let me go back and show you where that, when you click on send form, you get this option right here where it's asking you to share it with a link. You can click the embed code or you can enter email addresses for people to see. Now if you share the, the link to share and the email in the embed code, it's just the form. 
with your background. Remember, I don't have opportunity to put too terribly much verbiage in here. Now, I can do a form description, and I can write something nice up if I'd like to, but again, I'm looking to embed this with some pre-made content from somewhere else. All I want is the form part, okay? So when I click the embed form, I have the opportunity to resize it here if I'd like to, but then it gives me an iframe source code. So I simply copy that iframe source code and in the source of where I've created my squeeze page, whether it be, again, this is on Facebook, I can do this on a blog page, I can do this on a, a website, um, a lot of you guys on the call, guys and girls, have agent marketing. You can do it on a page, on a per, you know, create a brand new page on a Perl website and create a page on your personal URL website on agent marketing. Um, Active Rain, you could you could include it there. There's just there's a plethora, a lot of oh, there's some people that are your Weebly users. You could include it on a Weebly page by itself. There's a lot of different places that you would create your landing page. So once you've embedded the form, you're, it's ready to go. So what I had done is I had already created my information, you know, my little call to action. I had embedded my video onto my, my Facebook um, landing page already as well, and then I just simply embedded my Google form right underneath it. Again, I went with the basic format because I really don't need all the glitz and glamour and swirly, swirly, flowery stuff. I want it very basic on mine. So that's what it came out looking like. You can absolutely embed that into your Weebly website. You absolutely can. So what you would do with that, James, and I don't have Weebly open here in front of me, um, but you would go in and you would drag the uh, HT, the embed element to where you want the form to be. Let's say you embed your video, you put your U YouTube video in with a nice message above it with a call to action, and right below that you want your form to appear. You would drag the embed element there and paste that code into it. Now, uh, no, Peggy, I have not covered, not, not with this group, I have not covered how to create a tab using HTML code and, and whatnot. If we've got a little bit of time today, after today's presentation, I'll go over to Facebook and show you guys exactly how I created that using those codes. Um, but the main thing is, is I use that Google form. That's that's the guts. That's the thing that's going to capture me those leads. That's going to build my list. And so I used Google. So what we're going to do, show you now, is how to make sure that you're, if you're going to use the Google list, how are you going to get notifications, and how to set it up to make sure that you, or if you want to share it with your assistant, people are getting notified because. Don't, I, I will tell you, don't do this if you don't have a follow-up plan, and that's the big deal. That's how it's going to make money for you is what you do with your plan for following up after the fact. All right, so getting back to your form. Now, when you're, if you just finished from what going through the step-by-step -step instructions that I just showed you, once you click on Done here, that's going to leave you on this page. Up on the top on the left, you've got these green three bars. If you click that, that'll take you back to Google Drive. Or again, you can use the three square, the three lines of three squares, the, the little square thing to get back to Google Drive. When you get back to Google Drive, you're going to see your new form, and it automatically will create for you a responses spreadsheet under the same name, just with the word responses after it. Happy 4th to you as well, Bill. Great to see you here, my friend. And be safe and enjoy your closing. Have fun with it. And don't forget to ask for a referral at the end, as well as don't forget to ask for a testimonial, my friend. They love you right now because they're getting into a new home for the 4th of July. Don't forget to ask them for it. Good to see you, buddy.
All right, so once you're back in, again, you'll see you've got your form here, and it automatically creates for you the spreadsheet for responses. There's nothing you've got to do. There's nothing you've got to do to be able to create that responses. It just, it just happens. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to set up your notification rules. And that leads us to your question right there, James. You're, you're following along perfectly because that led you right to the path of, of what my next slide is, setting your notification rules. So what I did is I went into the free agent marketing analysis responses. And when inside there, you're going to select the option that says tools. Under tools, you're going to go to notification rules. When you get to notification rules, now by default, none of these boxes are, are, are circles are checked. None of these have a little bubble in them. So what I choose to do is I want to be notified anytime a change is made, and I want to email right away. Your other option is use a different a user submits a form. Um, and the other option is email a daily digest. So if you just want to be notified once a day when you know the activity on your form, you can. I want to be notified right away, and I want to be notified of any changes that are made, which means if I'm collaborating, if I'm sharing it with somebody, and let's say myself and my realtor partner are working on a listing lead generator that we've created a form for, and we're collaborating on it, and let's say let's say my agent happens to be sitting around a notification comes through that somebody filled out the form and she goes in and clicks on the checkbox that we've agreed on when somebody has called that particular lead I need to be notified about it right away so I'm going for any changes that are made and I want to be notified right away anytime because again that gets that triggers me on my follow-up process and my follow-up sequence no matter what it is that I'm squeezing information for you can also share with, again, your assistants. So you would click the share option up here. When you click the share option, you get this screen. What you can do is you can make it public, or I can invite people. When I put an email address in to invite people, I can choose whether or not they can edit my form, if they can comment on it, or if they can only view it. So I need, I need Chris to be able to, to make those changes because he's going to be doing some follow-up same as I. So I made sure that Chris can make edits because he, that way we've got, you know, we've talked about this, we've collaborated. Anybody that fills out the form, we're going to make a, a little X at the end of their record to know that one of the two of us have called them. So I needed Chris to be able to make edits. <clears throat> and then you simply click send. <clears throat> to save that change. So a couple of key elements when you're thinking about or when you're creating your squeeze page. The first thing you need to do is define the goal of your squeeze page. Are you looking to get face-to-face -face opportunities? Are you looking to generate buyer leads for VA loans? Are you looking to uh, get an agent to inquire about your marketing strategies. Are you looking for a buyer to ask you for first-time home buyer tips that you've got pre-written somewhere, or your your home buyer handbook, whatever the case may be? Define what your goal is before you create your squeeze page, because that'll help you with creating the types of questions that you want and minimizing the amount of stuff people have to fill out. Have a follow-up plan in place. Has anybody on this call, raise your hand if you have heard, ha have, has anybody heard me talk about having a follow-up plan in place before you begin your marketing strategies? Anybody heard that? Yes, Jim, you certainly have. Peggy, you have as well. Absolutely, Steve, James. <laughs> you guys know me. I, you guys know me too well. You know I'm going to spend, well, I won't do it to you, but you know that I could sit here for the next 20 minutes and talk about that one specific thing. Have a follow-up plan in place. When somebody fills out your squeeze form and your goal is to get face-to-face, -face, is your first step to send them a follow-up email thank you, thanking them for register, you know, for signing up? 
Is it to pick up the phone and call them and say, hey, great, taking action on your, you know, for my instance specifically, I'm offering to do a free agent marketing analysis. So my follow-up plan would probably be something like, They've got the confirmation page. First thing that's going to happen is I'm going to pick up the phone and I'm going to call them within a couple hours of them filling out that form. Hey, congratulations on taking action for your business, Jim. I'm super excited for you. What I do is I sit down with, with each real estate agent one-on-one. -on -one. We go over, a con we have a conversation, literally just a conversation about what you're currently doing, what's working for you, what you like doing best what's not working for you and what you don't like doing so that we can figure out what the best formula for you to be able to actively work and proactively work on your business. Does that sound fair? Great. Then my next step is I set that appointment up. Let's say I set it up for a couple of days. I'm then going to send them a follow-up email. Maybe I have a nice pre-written email that talks all about, you know, different marketing strategies that some agents are doing or that talks about some sort of something that differentiates the top producers in real estate versus the, the, the average guys and something that is actionable that I know that I would be able to talk about with my real estate agent when I go meet with them. Some sort of communication that brands me as an expert in marketing, that brands me as somebody that knows in between when I call, when they filled out my form, I called them and when I met with them face to face because I want that extra little bit of touch. It would probably be in the form of a video. So that would be my follow-up plan. And then I'd probably go a little bit further and set up a plan of action or a follow-up plan. <laughs> and that I've just realized I've, I've got this as part of, of the PowerPoint here. Have a plan to follow up long after delivery. So once I've met with them and I've offered that, I've, I've met with them and given them their free marketing analysis, I'm going to set up a plan for how I'm going to follow up with them long term. Is it a series of five emails that go out over a period of two months? Is it a three email call, three email call, three email call over the next 30 days? You know, whatever that plan is, I need to have it planned out, processed, ready to roll. Have your offer packaged and ready. So if I'm offering a free agent marketing analysis, I need to have that, I can't just wing it. I need to know what that's going to be about. I need to have something on paper, something written down. Maybe even have a nice little PowerPoint slide that looks like a flyer that has some bullet points of the things I'm going to cover and some of the the hot items of why get a marketing, marketing analysis, you know, are you, you know, what we'll talk about, database management, prospecting, uh, presentation skills, closing skills, you know, maybe go through some of the things, have some bullet points of some of the things that we're going to cover and, and you know, hey, would you like to, to grade yourself on these things prior to our meeting? I've seen a lot of different people with, with you know, kind of a, a grading scale that gets the real estate agent to open up to you about what they're what they struggle with and what they feel like they're really good at. Um, so have your offer, you know, prepackaged, ready to go. If it's, you know, like I said, on a free marketing analysis, that would probably be that in between email between when I when I called them and met them, I'd email them something that has like my bullet points on what what types of things we're going to cover. They, that way they feel like they're getting the thing that they signed up for. If it's a frequently asked questions for VA loan people that you're, you're trying to get signed up, have those frequently asked questions pre-done on something that you can simply quickly deliver to them because that's what they're signing up for. That's what they've taken their time for. It's valuable to them, and that's what they want. They don't really care about you calling with them or following up. They want the thing that they signed up for. Okay, um, make your offer valuable to the target. Again, more valuable, and I've talked on that that probably enough today. Make it something that entices them to not give you their information, but entices them to spend the time it takes to fill out your form and feel as if it's worth that time and effort to do so. 
and and don't sit there and try and perfect uh, it, the mistake a lot of people make is they'll sit there they they've got a squeeze form made they're working on their page and they will sit there for 2 months working on perfecting the the sales script and perfecting you know where the image goes versus where the form is versus where my video is and sitting there and perfecting it and perfecting it and perfecting it when meanwhile it's not generating you you spent a lot of time and effort and it's not generated a single lead or a single you know person jumping in and filling out the form get the form out there you know do your best up front get it looking you know have the components that you know you need and then get it out there and analyze its performance you know change the picture from the left to the right side after about a week and see analyze the performance well i definitely got more clicks when the picture was on the right side okay so boom now you got now you're perfecting it i definitely got more like clicks on the ad when when I used this image of the video but when they got there man that nobody took action all right so let's work on the sales script let's work on what the video is saying people aren't enticed to do it maybe they're not even getting to the video maybe we shorten the video or take the video out altogether and put it in verbiage see which analyze those results and see which one's getting you the best results that's how you perfect your landing pages that's how you perfect your squeeze pages you don't perfect it first and then get it out there you get it out there and see what works and perfect it based on what's working those are some of the keys to making it happen and just so you've got a few ideas of what you can make squeeze pages on today to get going on this right now in your business today so again, an agent marketing analysis, that's something I've been talking about, you know, that's what I kind of demoed mine on today, which is basically, for me, an agent marketing analysis is a face-to-face. -face. I'm going to ask them what they're doing now, what they struggle at, then every week I'm going to bring them value to help with those things that we discussed. I'm going to continuously follow up and try and bring them value. If they said they're terrible at prospecting, boom, I'm going to teach them how to, how to you know, how to go out there and figure out fun and inventive ways to get new prospects. Maybe I'll teach them some of the things I know about creating squeeze pages and landing pages. Um, niche information is a great one to do squeeze pages with if you're going for a consumer direct approach. And by the way, guys, a consumer direct approach in this day and age, if you don't have that as a revenue stream in your business, you really need to start looking into it and thinking of it by far the most productive way to get started with consumer direct approach is a niche market something like a VA loan USDA loans reverse mortgages um, FHA first-time home buyer FHA you know um, I can't remember what the programs called but where you can you can get money you know you can get a loan that that has extra money in it for you to refurbish the home just those kinds of niches people are going to search for them specifically remember 88 percent of people that search for their home online the second step is to contact a real estate agent it's the 12 percent to oak 3k thank you joy <laughs> thank you joy yep peggy too fha 203k thank you guys um where was i 88 percent of people that purchase that that look for a home online first their second step is to contact a real estate agent the other 12 percent are specifically looking for a specific product that fits their very specific unique need that's what you want to tap into how to market for a VA loan directly to the consumer so what I would do to market directly to a VA loan consumer is I would put together a cool squeeze page that talks about Hey, are you a veteran? Are you looking to, to you know, are, are you a veteran? Thank you so much for your service. We greatly appreciate you. As you, as you may or may not know, there are special op opportunities for veterans to purchase homes. If you have any questions about, about that, get the free report that answers all the frequently asked questions that a veteran may have about purchasing a home with this amazing benefit. 
and then that's the incentive. You know, let me know where you want me to send this free report on all the questions you will have about a VA loans and the correct answers. Let me dispel all the myths for you. And then they squeeze the form. Now I'm sending them just to frequently asked questions. And how would you get that email to the consumer? I wouldn't, I wouldn't send it out as an email. That would be an ad that I would do, and I would probably run that ad first and foremost. I'd start that ad on Facebook. And I don't think I would start with a custom audience. What I would do is I would start with the demographics, probably 50-mile radius around my home. Um, and in the demographic section, I would select military, military veterans and let that baby go and, and see who clicks on it. It's not an email campaign. That's an advertising campaign I would run. I would probably make a post with the link to that to, that, to my landing page on my fan, Facebook fan page, and then I would do a promoted post and uh, get that directly into the news feeds of some people. Um, so niche marketing, great stuff, the reverse mortgage thing, really easy to do. Um, invitations to your events are great reasons to create or great ways for, for squeezing information and getting people to register and sign up for you. Um, you can invite them to classes you teach, classes you have access to, lunch and learns, happy hours, ice cream socials, golly, you name it. There's um, I know that there's a couple of people that recently have been doing wine tastings. Um, most of your large wine stores, if you talk to the manager there, are more than welcome, more than happy to do a wine tasting for you and how many ever people you can bring with you. Um, you just make the stipulation. You get 10 minutes to present in the beginning, and then the wine tasting's all them. They're more than welcome to, are more than glad to provide the facilities. Invite people to that. Access to your property system, golly, I mean, I'm just looking who all's on the class with me today. I think there's only three people on this class that don't have the um, either agent marketing or listing booster single property website system that they can offer to their agents. So that's, a, that's you know, come up with a really cool inventive way to invite agents to check out your property marketing system or your property your listing getting system is what I'd call it I got this great new listing getting system that you cannot go without it's great stuff so that is all I've got for the presentation now one of the things Peggy had asked earlier on Facebook how did I create that tab or, or that landing page so Peggy I cheat I use the free stuff. You know me. I, 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 I make it easy on myself. So what I did is I used Woobox. And I created a tab inside of Woobox utilizing, so here's, here's, here's what my tab looks like. And I just did this quickly. I didn't even take the time to beautify it or pimp it out or make it nice and pretty. Again, I'm going to, I'm going to base, I'm going to do those things as time goes on based on what's working, what's not working. So here's the, the thing itself. There's the whole form. There's what it looks like. It's on my Facebook fan page. It's as a tab. And I can do an advertisement directly to this tab. So to do it, I in settings, so the first thing I did is I was just in the editor and I typed in my basic message. I typed in my basic message. All I did was type it in. Thanks for Thanks for stopping by. Take a minute to check out. Uh, thanks for stopping by. Take a minute to check out the minute and a half video below. It's a brief breakdown on what is included in the free agent marketing analysis. After viewing the short video, if you'd like your free agent marketing analysis, just tell me below how to get it to you. And so they see, watch the little short minute and a half video, and that's where I wow them. That's where I take my opportunity to tell them what all's involved, what they get, all that good stuff, you know, how I'm going to help them explode their business, and so on and so forth. And then I embedded my little, my little form down there. Okay? To embed my form and my video, notice I'm just on the editor part here. I can type in anything I want. I can embed pictures. I can hyperlink things up here. But then I can also click to source 
and I can embed my videos and I can embed my forms. So all I did was work between editor and source. So I used editor for my, my info, my, my message itself. And I could beautify that if I wanted to. I didn't mean to do that. And I could beautify that if I want to. Maybe I'm not a big fan of this. This black color is pretty boring. So I'll come over here and I'm going to go to this and we'll go to more colors. And uh, let's see. Picker named. Let's go to palette. Um, what do we got here? That's... Well, anyway, you can pick whatever color you'd like to deal with. Maybe I want to add some cool gizmo-y stuff right in here, um, like a little arrow image for, for the, yeah, for the, um, for people to, to pay attention to my video. I can add anything I want, any kind of elements that I want to add. I simply just, you know, keep adding in the editor. I can, you know, I can insert images. I can insert, if I've got HTML code, I can insert that stuff too. So once I did that, I just renamed it, and then I saved settings, and then you view tab. Now this green bar at the top, only I see that because I'm an admin. Um, so that's the only thing that's seen, and then there's my Google Form. Does that answer your question? Does that answer your question, Peggy, on, on how I did that inside of Facebook? And then the next step, and maybe that is something that we'll cover, you know, in the next little bit here, is setting up and running the actual ad. <laughs> yeah, you're, you know what, Peggy, and that's that's why we put these things on recording, because I know it's going to take a couple of times, and, and then you'll be an expert. To start it off, you know, we'll, I'll show you from scratch here. To start it off, you simply go to Woo box and select the woo box custom tab install page tab you select the page you want to add it to so maybe I add it to um, Paul's agent help center so I'm going to add that tab add page tab to Paul's agent help center so now it's adding that tab automatically And I'm here. So I'm on source by default. If I go to editor, I can begin creating my message. Maybe I want to copy and paste a message from somewhere else. Maybe I've got this, uh, this cool, you know, join me today to learn how to put the pieces to the puzzle together. So I'm going to copy that. And I want that to be part of my message here. So kind of messed up with all the different um, formatting that it did. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give this a Arial. Let's go with 14. And we're gonna, we can do it as a paragraph. I've got different header settings if I want to do it as like a big header kind of deal. So let's say I want to... So I want this to be a big old header, and then I want this to be, um, let's call this header 3, okay? And I want this to be big, bright, orange color, and I want the rest of it to be a big blue color. Yes, yes, Chad, I am going orange and blue on you, my friend. I know how much you love the orange and blue. Go Gators. <laughs> um, and then let's say, okay, I want to I add my video in there now. Let me, uh, let me backspace that. 
and I want to add my video now. So I just go to the source section. I come find my video. So if I come over here and I go to YouTube and I go to, by the way, YouTube has changed where everything is. We'll do a class on that sometime soon. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go to my creator studio. I go to my video manager. I go to my video. I get my share button going. I get my embed button going. Boom, I copy that. Give me a little space. Paste that in there. I'm always going to change it to autoplay and percent. Oops. What happened there? Ampersand auto play equals one. Boom. So now if I come back to editor and I select all and I do that and I do all that and I save settings. I've now added my little video with my little message and all that cool stuff. <laughs> Free is my four letter my favorite four letter word also, Peggy. That's my favorite as well. Uh, for the autoplay, so for any time, and that's a great question, anybody that's doing any kind of video and utilizing YouTube to display your video, when you go to YouTube, a couple of key things to note. Notice that I have unchecked where it says show suggested videos when video finishes. Does everybody see that? Show right here when you check show suggested videos when video finishes, it changes the code. So when I uncheck that, what it did just now is it added this question mark, REL equals zero. That stands for related or relevant videos equals how many to show? Zero. I don't want any relevant videos being shown at the end of my video. When it finishes playing, I want it to just finish playing, right? And so what I do, let me see if I can't find the beginning of it. Let me get it out of there real quick. Let me make sure it's gone. So it's gone out of there. So I come to source and I'm going to add it back in. And then when I paste my code in, I paste my code. It's That's just my regular code. I paste it in, right? So I look for that. REL equals zero. That's where it's giving it special instructions. And so at the end of the zero where it's telling it to show zero related videos before the quote marks, I'm going to say and ampersand auto play equals one. Okay? So I'm saying don't show any related videos and auto play at one second. Right? So now when I come back to my video, my video auto plays at one second. Can you run through again how to turn on notifications on a Google Drive form? Absolutely. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your Google Drive. So I've got my Google Drive open here, but I'll show it to you from scratch just as if it was not opened at all. So you go to Google and you select the little boxes and you open up your Google Drive. And again, when you create your form, you're going to have your form itself and then you're going to have your form responses. So you're going to open up your form responses and once you're in there, you simply go to the tools option at the top up here. Once it's ready, you go to the tools options and in tools, you're going to go to notification rules. 
So in notification rules right now, I've got a rule already set that if any changes are made, then send an email. So if I delete that, I don't have any notification rules going on right now. So then if I come to tools, notification rules, it reprompts me because I don't have any rules set. So I'm going to say any changes are made, email me right away, save. So I've now added that notification rule that if any changes are made to this form, it needs to email me right away. What does fangate mean? Fangate basically means that you don't want people to see your stuff unless they're a fan of your page. I absolutely 100% encourage you to not ever, 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 ever use that because people will close out of your page. There's so many fan pages available to people today. Don't make it hard for them to get your information. Just give it to them. So what Fangate does is if I turn it on, um, if they don't like my page, they see a certain thing. I don't want them to do that. I want them to do, come on in. Come on in and scope around, look around all you want. I hope you decide to like my page. And if I've got good enough quality content, they will like my page. And they will engage with my posts and things like that if I've done the right things with quality content and providing them with value. So that's what Fangate does. I'm not a fan of it myself. That is it. That's all the time I got time. That's all the time I got time for. That's all the time we have for today, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Again, we want to wish from all of us here at Mortgage Mastermind Group to all of you a very, very safe and very happy 4th of July. I know it's not Veterans Day, but think, think one of our servicemen and women for what they've done to, to allow us to have an Independence Day, a day where we can still celebrate our independence and we have the freedom to celebrate it in any way that we want. Do me a favor and stay safe out there, guys. I'm Paul Baxter. You are attending the Daily Mastermind at the Mortgage Mastermind Group, and we are here to help you grow. Have a great day, everybody, and a happy, fun, safe fourth.